Welcome back. I bought another computer. And it's an 8-bit machine and if we open the package you can already spot the logo there. And it's an Atari XE. And this is the Atari XE manual. And it's a thin one at about 100 pages. So let's see what we got. A power supply. We have the best video cable in the world, the RF cable. Nice. We have an assortment of rattling stuff. That is Moon Patrol. And this is Barnyard Blaster. Mm -hmm. Also rattling. And this is Ball Blazer by Lucasfilm Games. And this is actually broken. So there are screws in here somewhere. There and there. So one could open this and take a peek inside. Maybe we do this just to check what's rattling in there. According to the seller, everything works fine. There's just one minor thing about this machine. We will take a look at it in a minute. So there's nothing more in there except for the machine. It's well packed, which I like. By the way, I paid 125 shipped for this. And that machine came from, I think, the Netherlands. Oh, the color is nice. It's a bit dirty, but not too yellowed. And we still have the protective film on the logo, which is nice. And we have the famous mushy keyboard. And that is even mushier than the one from the Atari ST, which it which it is modeled after. Yeah, nice. It's dirty as hell, but that can be helped with some water. So this is, we have a serial, an Atari 65XE. So I was under the impression, yeah, that's correct. Um, and it's serial 8487. And some stuff I can't read. And the only thing about this machine is it's missing the tabs on this cartridge thing here. Cartridges still work. Not sure why. Yeah, well, there may be some cartridges which have um, this here closed off and if there are no tabs, they op don't open up. Not sure if I have one of these. This works just fine. I can't recall if this has actual Luma Chroma. I have to check that out. Um, yeah, other than that, we have the SIO port, monitor port, channel selector for the television, power plug, and the good old power switch. And we have uh, two joystick ports. And a case that's a bit wobbly, but well. It's dirty, but it's in otherwise good condition if it actually works. So let me grab my 800XL to compare the size. Okay, and here's the 800XL. Let me put that, that right here. You can see the 65XE is a bit less white. Um, otherwise, this is a bit Otherwise, the 65XE is a bit taller in that direction. And height-wise, they shouldn't be too different. No, pretty much the same. XL is a bit higher, just a little, little bit. Port-wise, we have pretty much the same configuration, except for this parallel port, which is gone and is replaced by this expansion port. Not sure which hardware actually worked on this parallel port here. 
open from the side. Ports have moved, that's all. Okay, so let's try my beloved, newly beloved A8 Pico card that fits in here. And it does not because of the case. The case doesn't fit on that port here, so I have to take it out of the port to test it here, or just test with one of the other cartridges, which should go in here, and they do. So this cartridge port has these tabs, tabs here, and they go into these holes next to the cartridge, so yeah. Okay, let's open this machine up and take a look inside. And while I'm at it, I will also clean this machine. So there seem to be just a few screws here, 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 and something here, which I don't know what it is. Screws look to be, I would say, almost untouched. I'm not quite sure. The screws are really in here. Okay, that should do it. This just lifts off and can be easily cleaned. Keyboard, which is dirty, it's just clipped in here and it's... Ah, there's a ribbon cable here. I hate ribbon cables. Let's just take that out. And we have a shield, and uh, it seems this time around you don't have to turn it over the whole machine and board and do stuff. You can just use some pliers to move these metal tongues here. It should be that. And there we are. Okay. Um, so we have a ref one, and this is the 130XE actually, the board at least. So they just threw the board in here and called it a day. <laughs> nice. Other than that, this looks completely untouched. Reminds me a little of the Amiga Ref 6 boards, where there are um, the spaces for. The RAM chips. I'm not sure if I have those. 2464. Could be. The question is how easy is it to upgrade this machine? But that is definitely an option because I bought this machine to upgrade it to 128K because I already have an 800XL, which is pretty much the same machine. So I have two around. That looks interesting here. Just some resistors or stuff. Are these resistors? I'm not sure. Other than that, it's almost all custom ICs and few resistors and very few caps. So it's a few weeks later and uh, actually it's a few months later and I have the XE here and I have a, an Atari 400 on the bench. Um, I have the 48K memory card here, which I will, I will talk about this in a separate video because I'm trying to fix this right now and I found the fault and I'm waiting for parts and yeah. So I did actually go and clean this machine and it looks like it's just taken out of the, of the retail box. I left the sticker on here, but it looks absolutely freaking lootly brand new. It came out super nice. Didn't do anything about the keyboard because, well, it's what it is. Um, I also went and printed a new label for the ball blazer cartridge, which looks nice. I also went and bought the 512K RAM expansion or SRAM memory expansion um, for this machine or any XL machine except for the 600. And um, it's by, I think his first name is Jürgen um, van Radecke, and he sells these in the 
um, Arbook online shop, which is the Atari club I'm a member of now. And I will link in the description below. So if you're interested in this, it's uh, as far as I know, it's the, the biggest Atari club, at least in Europe, maybe even in the world. I'm not sure. You can find out yourself. I have Moon Patrol here, which came with the machine, and I have a Star Raiders um, cartridge. And you can see that you can't see the exposed connector here. So you have to have these tabs that go in here to open it. But what you can do is you can use a screwdriver, flathead screwdriver, and just push here. And there's just one of these on one side, and you can just push it down. And then you hold this and you go and you as fast as you can push this in here and voila works and it snaps out so could 3d print something there's an 3d model for an angled connector so you put it in here and you have your cartridge port sticking up which is way nicer than this but i haven't done this yet so maybe i will so let's test this machine out if it actually works i mean i, I cleaned it and it looks nice, but does it actually work? And can I put in this RAM expansion, which will be part two of this two-part series? So yeah, let's go to the TV and let's check it out. If you saw one of my last videos, you already know this little TV, which I found on the side of the road and I love it. It's perfect. I have my USB power connector here for the Atari, which I made in a different video which you can actually find in my video list. And I have a C64 video cable because this actually works here with a DIN connector, five pin in this case. Let's put this here. And I have these labeled and it says composite on the white and audio on the yellow. So we just have to switch the inputs here and let's see what happens. So we switch to AV and switch the machine on and uh, it looks good. Yes. Awesome. We are in basic. Very good. So now let's try cartridge. Let's for example try Moon Patrol. Let me put this in here somehow. We need a joystick, which I have here. That goes somewhere here. No, oh, and there's one control. And I think with select, yes, we can select one or two players and we say start. And that works just fine. Awesome. Yeah, I think I played Moon Patrol on the C64, I'm not sure. Okay, that works. So let's try another one. Let's maybe try Star Raider. I have to open this up again. So I did push this shutter down. Let's put this on here and hope that I can push it in. Yep, that worked. Great. And let's fire it up. Ah, there we are. Star Raider. 1997. Wow, that's old. For this being from 1997, this is pretty ridiculous. I mean, this machine runs about double the speed of a C64, at least. 
And this is why the Eidolon and all these other games like Rescue and Fractalus were made on the Atari and ported to the C64. Because this machine was much more capable in terms of raw performance. Raw performance. <laughs> no idea what I have to do here. Just shooting stuff. And stuff is shooting me. Yeah, so um, this will be a rather short video, so I'm actually done. I will not show how I get th got this to this state here and nice and clean and stuff like that. Um, I just disassembled it and cleaned it with soap and water and dried it properly. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm super happy with it. So next video will be me trying to put in this 512K RAM expansion or next video on this here. Maybe there will be the Atari 400 video in between. And um, yeah, we will see if that actually works. And then we can use programs from the A8 Pico card, which came with programs that actually use, or demos, which use the 128K and I think even the 512K. So, if you're not already a member of the Abuk Atari Club, please check the link in the description below and there you can get stuff like this 512K SRAM expansion and the 48K expansion for the Atari 400, which you will see in one of the next videos. So stay safe. Until next time. Cheerio. Thank you for watching Retro is the New Black. If you are new to the channel, please like and subscribe. If you like the video, please share. Every like, share and comment helps a lot. Until next time, bye bye.